Hello and welcome to the EMF studio. I am delighted to be joined by Martin Horgan, CEO of Sentamin. Uh, Martin, Sentamin Sukari mine is the only commercial mine in Egypt and we know that Sentamin has the aspirations along with the government to increase the co discoveries of more commercial mines. Can you tell us more about your aspirations and ambitions to help the government make the Egypt mining sector a significant contributor to its uh, GDP and how we're going to uh, eventually get more exploration companies to come to Egypt. Perfect, no problem. Oh, thank you for having me today. Uh, look, I, I think first and foremost is uh, to think about the Sukari mine, which is already a contributor to the uh, economy. Uh, the mine's been in operation since 2009, uh, uh, had a very successful run, uh, and now we're thinking about how we can uh, set the mine up for the next 10 years and beyond into the next decade. Uh, so we've focused very much over the last two or three years around uh, uh, optimising the mine, uh, uh, and making sure that Sukari fully contributes uh, uh, towards that target in its own right. Uh, we've increased reserves, uh, we've added 2 million ounces of gold, uh, uh, we're increasing production rates back towards a 500,000 ounce uh, uh, level, uh, and importantly focusing on costs, uh, uh, because clearly producing ounces at the right cost generates cash flow, which we share with government as part of our concession agreement. So I think the first point is to, is to make sure that we, uh, uh, we fully uh, optimise Sukari and make sure that is uh, uh, shared uh, with our partners at uh, EMRA and the Ministry of Petroleum as well. So delighted with that, and there's a few initiatives we can talk about later, uh, uh, certainly around costs and things like the solar plant we've developed as well. I think more broadly then, of course, is that we're very keen to see uh, exploration take place across the eastern desert where the Sukari mine is, uh, is centred. Uh, and clearly, you know, we believe that Sukari is a, is a fantastic example of the potential of, of Egypt, both in terms of its geology, but also importantly around its infrastructure, uh, around its human resource, uh, around its stability uh, and its ease of operation as well. So we think that's important to, to continue to, to, to push that along. Uh, as you might be aware that we applied uh, in 2020 as part of the, the ministerial uh, new bid round for exploration blocks and we were awarded 3,000 square kilometres uh, alongside some other leading uh, international industry players. Uh, and we've actually been busy over the last 12 months starting to work uh, our exploration ground already and, and we're actually drilling at this stage now. In parallel with that, we work with our industry partners uh, uh, to engage with government to make sure that we develop what we believe will be a, a robust a fair and equitable uh, mining uh, uh, law uh, which will then encourage uh, new companies to come to Egypt and I think once those new companies come uh, and start to, to sort of uh, uh, you know see the success that we and other groups are having that will really start to sort of move the sector forward as well so I think in part we're, we're, we're making sure we push Sukari as hard as we can uh, we're looking to push our exploration to grow that as an example to third parties and work with government around that, reg uh, that regulationary framework as well. Fantastic and can you tell me more about your current um um, operations in Egypt. I know that recently you um, published your decarbonisation 2030 roadmap. Um, can you expand more on your operations and what initiatives to further decarbonise your operations? Absolutely. So, so for us, uh, uh, clearly, um, you know, the uh, uh, as a London listed entity uh, on the stock exchange and, and with an international investor base uh, and our own individual desires as management and directors is that you know decarbonisation is one of the key. Uh, themes facing not just the mining industry but the planet as we go forward as well uh, and mining's in a slightly sort of unusual place is that it clearly contributes to carbon emissions but it's also critical to ensure that we get the raw materials that allow a decarbonisation uh, and a low, uh, a low uh, uh, carbon future to, to, to happen so the mining sector has to work hard at that uh, and at Sentiment we're no different from that as well um, I think the thing we've been pleasantly surprised at is that in looking to assess decarbonisation uh, uh, strategies, we've also been able to identify sort of, you know, cost savings. So it's not a case of that decarbonisation is an additional burden on the business, actually it's an opportunity. Uh, and certainly from our side, we think about reduction of use. Can we reduce the amount of energy that we, we apply to the mining process? And then once we reduce that energy, how do we produce that energy in a low carbon way? Um, uh, I think the, 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 the flagship for us last year was the development of a 36 megawatt solar plant. Uh, we commissioned that in Q3 last year, uh, about $36 million to, to build that, uh, and that saves us about $20 million a year at current diesel prices uh, in terms of uh, our economics. So a very quick payback for that project, so it makes absolutely perfect economic sense for us, but brilliantly reduces 60,000 tonnes of carbon uh, uh, from the atmosphere as well. So here's a wonderful example of decarbonisation that makes business sense. We're currently looking to expand that diesel plant, uh, sorry, that uh, uh, solar farm to, uh, to further displace diesel, uh, and we'll look at sort of completing those studies by the end of the year. And then the other thing we're currently evaluating is the ability to connect to the national grid. 
Egypt went through a transformatory uh, a, a, a sort of um, approach to its energy distribution and power generation network over the last five to seven years. Uh, uh, it's seen 14 gigawatt of new power added with its own domestic gas, but also renewables in terms of solar and wind. And on top of that, sort of a 3,000 kilometers of the high voltage distribution network around the country as well. So if we can connect into that grid, uh, we can further reduce our cost base, another win for us. But importantly, the grid has an aspiration to be at 40% renewables by 2030. So further contributing to our decarbonisation. So we see uh, uh, the sort of the moral and the social imperative of decarbonisation is something to focus on uh, and we're also seeing it's a fantastic opportunity from a business perspective as well. And I think Egypt's one of the best places to do that with solar iridians, with standing winds and that access to grid power as well. Fantastic and obviously you participated yesterday in our CEO panel on unlocking the potential of Egypt's mining sector. Can you just tell me sort of the key takeaways from that panel and just the Egypt Mining Forum in general this is obviously the second edition of the forum and wow, I mean, the growth speaks for itself. Over 40 speakers, 50 exhib exhibitors, and really the platform has the potential to serve as an instrumental event for the global mining industry to come to Egypt and see the great potential over here. I think that's right. Look, I think from my perspective, I was here last year at the inaugural event, uh, and just walking around the place, you can see the scale of the, uh, of the event has increased significantly from last year. And I think that really speaks volumes to the potential that people see in Egypt. So whether it's exhibitors, participants, uh, industry panelists, uh, and governments as well. So I think that really sort of just the growth of the, 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 of the forum itself indicates the appetite and interest in Egypt, which I, think, I think is fantastic. I think it's access to key decision makers in government. Uh, the fact that the Minister uh, of Petroleum, His Excellency El Moller, is here, uh, along with his full team, uh, uh, indicates e Egypt's seriousness to commit to the mining sector. Uh, he has been here over the two days and is accessible and available. Uh, uh, other governments are here to, to represent themselves as well. Uh, uh, all the major sort of mining companies are here uh, that are active in Egypt, uh, all the suppliers as well. So I, I think that's testament to the seriousness that people are seeing in, in that as well. I think that's fantastic. Uh, and having that access to a number of people in a single point uh, has been really good. Uh, and for us, it's a chance to really put Egypt on the map and continue to promote the, the potential here, geologically, that we know is there, this new mining code that's developing, uh, and then the, the opportunity for other companies to come here as well. So no, I've been delighted with the last two days. Thank you so much for your time, Martin.